Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, the majesty of God and human dignity. I want us to consider Psalm 8. And in looking at Psalm 8, I want us to consider the contrast between the majest- majesty of God and mankind. In a subsequent podcast, we will consider the New Testament application of Psalm 8 to the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But first, listen listen to this psalm, because it's a a great psalm. It's a, a glorious psalm, and it's often used in Christian worship. Let me read it to you. I'm reading from the New King James Version, but in so doing, I'm also going to put the name Yahweh there, because O Lord, Lord with all caps, is the covenant name of God, the name he revealed to Moses on the mountain, and the name he uses to identify himself as the covenant Lord of his people. And so the psalm begins in English, O Lord, our Lord. It would be better if we translated it Yahweh, our Adonai, Yahweh, our sovereign Lord and King. How excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, Yahweh, our sovereign, majestic king, how excellent is your name in all the earth. This psalm is, first of all, a prayer that is addressed to God. And the God to whom it is addressed is the creator God. He has the name Yahweh, which as he revealed to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, means I am that I am. He's the self-existent one who has always been, who's totally independent of all creation, and yet all creation is the work of his hands, including this earth and including mankind. The whole psalm is an address to God. But in this address to God, there is a contrast between the transcendent God who is majestic in the heavens and whose glory is seen in the earth in the works of creation, and man, the creature, a man who is made in the image of God in his original state, almost godlike, majestic, just a little lower than the angels and the overlord of creation and the creatures that are upon the earth. The psalmist stands in wonder of this great and glorious God. He does so by looking at the heavens above, the universe, the solar system that he can see. And he thinks that that God is the one who made this great and glorious heavens. And yet he thinks about people. He thinks about me. He is considerate of human beings, and he made human beings. He made mankind. What kind of God is this? He is so glorious, and yet he is mindful of mankind. That's the contrast we see. And he causes wonderment in the mind, in the heart, the affections of the psalmist. And he has done so ever since. We find it reflected in Christian hymns and in Psalter selections as hymns that are set to music. They're often paraphrases, but many times they follow the text very closely and certainly follow the ideas. There are two of those 
that I want to bring to your attention today. First is the Psalter selection of Psalm 8, entitled, Lord, our Lord, thy glorious name. Let me, let me read this Psalter selection to you. Lord, our Lord, thy glorious name, all thy wondrous works proclaim. In the heavens with the radiant signs, evermore thy glory shines. How great thy name. Lord, our Lord, in all the earth, how great thy name. Thine the name of matchless worth, excellent in all the earth, how great thy name. Verse 3, moon and stars and shining height, nightly tell their maker's might. When thy wondrous heavens I scan, then I know how weak is man, how great your name. Lord, our Lord, in all the earth, how great your name. Yours the name of matchless worth, excellent in all the earth. How great your name. And then the contrast in verse 4. What is man that he should be loved and visited by you, raised to an exalted height, crowned with honor in your sight? How great your name. With dominion crowned he stands o'er the creatures of your hand. All to him subjection yield in the sea and air and field. How great thy name. Lord, our Lord, in all the earth, how great your name. Yours the name of matchless worth, excellent in all the earth. How great your name. And then consider this great hymn. How great thou art. One of the most familiar Christian hymns from the 20th century. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook, and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great you are, how great you are. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to you, how great you are, how great you are. Truly, this is truth. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights. The next time, remember, God is a God of glorious majesty, and yet this majestic God considers you a human that he has created.